to introduce themselves as well? Hello, I'm Hello, I'm Mahesh Sharad. I'm Sharad from Sri Lanka. Uh, I am the secretary to the Internet Society Sri Lanka chapter and coordinator for IGF Sri Lanka and SIG School of Internet Governance Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm working in the private sector as a managing director. So I'll share my opinions, my views, my experiences with you regarding how we're going to uh, collaborate with youth and why we need youth to be collaborated in this IG arena. Thanks. Yeah, hi, I'm, hi, I am good morning and I am Aris Ignacio. I am from the Philippines and currently I am the Dean for the College of Computer Studies in Southville International School and Colleges. I am also part of the Internet Society Philippine Chapter as the Vice President for Development and uh, part of the MSG of uh, APRIGF. Uh, I would be also sharing with you some of the things that we have done, uh, especially bringing the youth into the table were in discussions of the IGF with regards to the APR IGF for that sake. So thank you. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, this is David from uh, eHelp Association. Uh, we're based in Hong Kong. Actually, we are doing the promotion on safer internet for children and the next generation. Uh, in the past year, uh, I was engaged in uh, the Asia region for the promotion on uh, the youth engagement in the internet governance. Uh, although I'm not no longer really work on that area because I leave my current position uh, to, to, to shift on uh, the child online safety, but I would like to share my PVS experience on uh, the difficulties and also uh, the challenges of how we can put youth to the table on, on uh, engaging in the internet governance uh, economy and also the uh, ecosystem. Uh, there are some challenges and, and I think it's interesting to uh, put everyone on the table and by different stakeholder perspective uh, to share and also trying to tackle those uh, issues and to, to like engage the whole communities in, in this kind of discussion. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bruna. I'm Bruna Santos. I'm from Brazil. And I'm a member of the Youth Observatory, which is a special interest group of Internet Society. And the idea today is to talk about, I mean, maybe for us, to talk about how Youth Observatory has been working on the Latin America region um, in order to empower youth to discuss Internet governance properly with its capacity building um, measures and also actions in the in the Latin America. Thank you. Uh, for the session, uh, we did a certain survey uh, around the world, uh, and uh, we have the results. Can we have the presentation? Yeah. And uh, we'll be sharing the uh, results, and, uh, and we'll probably be coming out with the report soon. So these were these are the some of the results. Yeah, can you make it big? Uh, during the uh, survey, what we uh, could see or what we could figure out is, uh, you know, a lot of respondents. Uh, communicated with us, and uh, there was this difference in between the youth of developed nation and the youth of developing nation. There was a huge difference, and you could see the uh, difference in the results. Yeah. I think on the side, you can make it big. Full screen. F5. Okay, right. The next slide. So uh, our survey was uh, was the the percentage of people uh, above 30 were 38 percent, 50 uh, and above uh, pe people were 4.3 percent, and 18 to 13. You know, like we had a maximum uh, people who attended the uh, survey. Uh, that was 57.4 percent. Next slide. Uh, the count of sex was uh, preferred not to say 2.1 percent. Female was 36.2 percent, and male was 61.7 uh, percent. We wanted to, um, you know, bring in more women uh, 
you know, respondent as well, but you know, this is what we could get. And as per region, we had uh, Asia Pacific uh, was, you know, for Asia Pac from Asia Pacific, we had the most uh, respondents responding to the survey. From Middle East, we had around two. And um, America, we had around uh, seven, eight. And from Africa, we had more than 10. And from Europe, we had around two or three. And this survey was done within one month. So, you know, the respondent uh, numbers are very less, but we, we, were, we managed to secure around 50 uh, people. So the first question that was there was, uh, where does youth stand as a stakeholder in IG process? You know, you could clearly see uh, the data, uh, you know, that, that there is a confusion uh, whether youth should be a stakeholder or, you know, like the, the, uh, the, the choices were uh, uh, people voted 40% to very important, extremely important was voted for 45.5% and they should be involved was 14.5%. So this kind of like shows the confusion, you know, like in people of taking youth as a stakeholder. Though it is there, but still, uh, it, it's not clear that uh, counts of how do you think uh, youth should be involved in IG process. So uh, the indicators were policy and research, awareness, communication, networking, and next generation, and all leaders. With this, uh, with these indicators, everybody was like so sure, and like a majority of the people uh, voted for all. That was sixty percent. Next generation leaders was voted uh, 29. Uh, the numbers are also there. Uh, so it got around 14 uh, votes. And um, communication and networking was 25%. 12 people voted for it. And awareness was 13. Uh, that's 27%. And policy and research was 14.5 and 7%. So the next question was, why should youth be involved in IG process? The indicators were they, they face the issues and problems, they are the next generation leaders, and they are the most vulnerable group. Uh, they face the issues and problems uh, scored 64.5%, so that was 31 people uh, rated it. Uh, they are the next generation leaders, around 81.2% uh, people voted, so that was like we got around 39 votes for this. Um, and they are the most vulnerable group 43.7 percent, so 21 people, you know, they, they voted for it. So more or less, you know, you could see the dynamics about uh, youth being vulnerable is recognized. At the same time, you know, people do have the, uh, you know, the, the intentions of the next generation leaders and how important it is to bring in the youth. And you could cl clearly sh see the clash because you know, here, uh, this rates the top, and in the f first one, where we talk about stakeholder, then th there is a certain difference. <clears throat> so the next question was, what are the challenges for youth leadership in internet governance? Uh, the indicators were lack of basic knowledge of internet core values, complicated internet politics, nepotism and favoritism, funding, limited mentality, communication and network, internet governance itself, internet policy and infrastructure, diversity to technical cost of internet, uh, the, indicator basic, uh, lack, the indicator lack of basic knowledge of internet core values secured 72.91%, complicated internet politics secured 62.5%, uh, that was 30 votes, Nepotism and favoritism uh, scored 12, so that was 0.25%. Funding uh, was 64.58%. Uh, limited mentality was 14.58%. Communication and networking was 37%. Internet governance itself as is complicated was 18.75%. Uh, and internet policy and infrastructure was 35.41%. Diversity, 14.58%. Too technical, it's 16.66 percent. Cost of internet is 16.66 percent. So you might be quite uh, confused in the idea of how come uh, these have so much percentage. Uh, what we had done was we had uh, allowed multiple options, so people were choosing, you know, multiple options. 
next slide so the next question was why do you think there is a limitation for youth involvement in ig process so the indicators were lack of awareness limited opportunity nepotism and favoritism again a lack of promotion of fellowship a limited mentality lack of communication and collaboration lack of interest a lack of multi stakeholder concept so lack of awareness scored 64.58% limited opportunity scored 56.26% nepotism and favoritism 25% lack of promotion of fellowship 47.91% limited mentality 12.5% lack of communication and collaboration 47.91% lack of interest 2.08% uh, lack of multi stakeholder concept was 16.66% the next question was what should be done to promote youth engagement and involvement so the indicators were more fellowship so that was 35.4% uh, secured better oh, next next slide um, so, uh, better awareness campaign scored 66.66%. Collaborative approach from all sides 62.5%. Easy funding methods uh, 54.16%. Uh, better communication and network 64.58%. Diversity 2708 More online interactions 4.83%. Simplification of IG process 3958 So. Uh, this question certainly highlights, uh, you know, some of the engagement rules and why uh, there is a challenge in terms of youth. Uh, currently, we are working on the next slide. Yeah. Uh, working on the report. If you would like to uh, receive the report, please, uh, uh, there is a paper. Please g uh, give us your email address. We'll probably send it to you as soon as the IGF is over. And uh, the findings of the, you know, the survey was there was a youth gap, engagement, fellowship, coaching and mentoring program, next generation policy in internet organization, uh, more collaboration from all sides and diversity. So, you know, uh, uh, while doing the survey and while narrating the indicators, I strongly believe the, uh, the reality of the, uh, the youth gap. Because a youth of a developed nation and a youth of a, a developing nation has different indicators, different uh, you know, knowledge and different uh, mindset. So that needs to be targeted. And, uh, you know, uh, and that, that needs to be integrated in the coaching and mentoring programs as well. Uh, especially for fellows uh, who come out here to all these internet events and uh, when they go back, uh, most of the times uh, the engagement seems very nil. So I think coaching and mentoring needs further enhancement in promoting and in, in how they should use their resources because uh, Learn IG itself is a program that we organize the fellows, you know, and we have started reaching out. We have zero funding. The only thing that we have is energy. And we started reaching out to different countries in Asia and now we, we, we stand somewhere. And we have a lot of documents, you know, you could you could build something out of that. And more or less, you know, uh, diversity itself, because the gap needs to come down. People need to interact. And that is somewhere lacking. So <clears throat> I'd probably end my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, we'll probably take the questions. And during the time frame we are, uh, when we are discussing, if you have a question, please do raise your hand. Uh, we will address the questions uh, because we want to make it a more uh, forum uh, pattern because we need to we are the youth and we need to collaborate in so many ways so we we, we are certainly uh, we certainly want to uh, work with you we certainly want to inspire you motivate you and collaborate collaborate with you so now uh, we start the discussion uh, session discussion session phase uh, now I'd like to ask the panelist uh, regarding the youth, uh, you know, youth challenges and problems or if they have anything uh, in regards to the presentation that I've made, uh, you know, if you have certain uh, queries or if you, if you want to say something, please do say it. I would, uh, I would ask Eris to speak on, on behalf first. Okay. Thank you, Shridip. Okay, with regards to yeah. the presentation that you have, uh, 
I think it is quite enlightening that there are some instances and some of these problems that haven't uh, you have presented that the youth needs to to know and with regards to all of those things that needs to be taken care of for them to be able to be more involved in the <coughs> IG process. So, yeah, it's a very good presentation and hopefully we could get the report sometime soon. Uh, I would like to ask him, like, uh, you know, the, the efforts that you have been doing from your college, uh, that you have been bringing a lot of people from your college uh, to the EPRIGF. Can you share more? Can you light more on what is going on, how you are taking the step? Uh, because uh, there is no funding, right? You guys are doing it on your own. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah uh, first of all, there is really no funding. Uh, <laughs> we, we, are just co we are just coordinating with, the, with Net Mission and particularly with David and for the for the start of it um, what we do is that uh, actually the the way we do it is really at first they're not really into the IG thing because IG discussion in the Philippines it's really in its infancy am I right am I right G? and uh, a lot of the students only are only concerned with things such as oh our internet is so slow <laughs> oh, our i'm having problems connecting and so on and so forth so it's really more of a really enlightening them on how would they be able to be on the table <laughs> actually it's a it's really a funny thing uh, to encourage actually i started locally i started in our university and to encourage them to be able to go there on their own. Actually, I told them that it's merely first tourism. It's my selling point, actually. It's my selling point. And out of that one, I inserted a lot of things going towards before they go home, before they go to the event itself. It's like I trained them with what IG is. Actually, I one of the platforms that uh, we utilize is the Learn IG platform, which is the one that Tridip has been uh, promoting. And they've learned a lot from that. So at least they have an idea before they went there. And uh, with the cooperation of NetMission, uh, they were immersed with some of the realities with regards to the IT dis with IG discussions. And uh, they were able to immerse themselves and have a taste of it. That's why the following year, they have this urge already to come. Even though some of them are, in, are a, re a repeater of coming, going there, and still they have to spend on their own. And uh, yeah, very, very, very enlightening. Very, and I'm really very happy that they have that chance, uh, even though they're spending it on their own because of that rare chance to discuss the issues that they really want to tell the public. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Eris. Now I'd like to ask Bruna to light on the topic and uh, to share her experience about the Latin and uh, e even with the NCUC, like the work that she has been doing and promoting a lot of youth. Yeah, Bruna. Yeah, I, sorry, I forgot to mention um, NCUC. NCC is the non-commercial users constituency um, inside ICON. It's one of the places for the civil society to engage with um, ICON, if you're willing to work on the DNS, the domain system, and also um, critical resources. So um, on the NCC side, um, given that it's like a civil society place, we've been trying to outreach to new voices. So especially in the Latin community, the idea has been like to, uh, to show what is NTC, to show what the DNS is about, and to have people willing to volunteer and to work with us so far. And um, on, the, like, on the more broad IG point of view, um, being a member of the Youth Observatory um, has been like one of the things that have uplift, uplifted sort of my my trajectory in IG. I have been working for the Brazilian government for the past year, but I was also always doing some sort of a backstage job, so I didn't get to attend the forums. So having this like great network of like fellow Latins who are also working at the same subject is is like amazing. 
and um, just like we're, we just completed two, our two-year anniversary and we have like launched this book which is about um, analysis of uh, connected youth so we also have the same problems like lack of funding lack of awareness and we've been trying to reach out to possible funders to people who would be willing to collaborate with us. So for this book, we counted on Internet Society and SaferNet, which is a Brazilian NGO. And this is pretty much we, what we have been doing, working on capacity building, talking to people, showing what we are about, and this is what the LAC has been working on, IG so far. Uh, thank you, Bruna, for sharing her um, experience. Now I'd request uh, Gian, you know, the young, the passionate, uh, the, uh, the Asian, you know, she, she has been doing a lot of credible work in pushing the IG uh, towards the young people. She is an icon, uh, and I would like to uh, ask her, you know, like what her experiences are, what the challenge, the real challenge, uh, challenges are in terms of uh, when you are dealing with you young people. Because, uh, you know, if you look at the table right now, there, there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we, are, we consider ourselves youth, but, you know, like not, not the age. So, you know, we have to accept that and move forward. So, you know, please. Uh. So, um, just, just echoing what uh, Aris and Bruna said, Actually, the problem is also having uh, like young people who are actually interested in internet governance issues, and because in 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 Hong Kong, like not a lot of young people are also interested in internet governance, and usually they would just focus on like things that are closer to them, like social media or um, something. So one of the problems is actually encouraging people who are not. Uh, young people who are not from technical backgrounds to join the initiative and personally I am not from a technical background as well and so that's one of the challenges and of course there's also of course funding <laughs> problems <laughs> that uh, we have to uh, look for fundings ourselves and sometimes for young people it's difficult because we don't have a lot of you know um, experience, so-called experience behind us. So we have to show that, oh, we can do this, we, what, what we can do and what, what we can give back to the people who support us. Um, yeah, so that's. Thank you, Jian. I think that that gives us the light to understand young people more, though we do, we do feel it inside that, you know, the need still. Uh, the reality is we have to accept because as dynamic as the internet is, uh, the youth, you know, like they're born with mobile phones. So we have to understand, we have to take that step. So now I would like to request uh, David uh, to talk about his initiatives and what he is doing and wh what challenges uh, he feels. And please, if you have any question, please say your name and raise your hand. Uh, please feel free to ask us questions. Uh, or if there is anything that is happening in your country, uh, we would love to hear it. We would love to collaborate. Uh, yeah, thank you. Please, David. Hi. <clears throat> Um, actually, I'm now doing some promotion on uh, safer internet for the next generation, uh, mainly based in Hong Kong, by bringing a network uh, of InHope uh, that tackles the child abusive content online. Uh, but on this sense, I, I would like to highlight a very important point is, um, as we have all mentioned about lack of interest of students and, and children nowadays on, on the internet governance issue, uh, I do think that it's very important to uh, raise the awareness on uh, the digital citizenship of uh, the next generation nowadays. Uh, actually, it is how they can behave online. Um, on this area, I do think internet governance engagement is one of the means uh, to make our next generation participate in the process and they would be building the sense of belongings uh, on, on how they can bring real emphasis to uh, the situation uh, on this sense. But regarding uh, some challenges in, 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 in the sense is, of course, uh, I think all the panels have all, all agree is um, they do not know about internet governance. There is a platform for them to really engage in the policy discussion. Uh, no, no matter how it's on, on, on the area, they, they just like focus on social media and, and playing uh, the computer games all, all the day. That's, that's the reality. But on, on the other hand, is it possible to like uh, 
integrate those uh, ideas on, on they can engage in, in the process in a curriculum uh, in their schools or, or for the schools to promote it since a very young age uh, about the concept of they can really participate in process. So I do think um, education is, is one of the method and also putting that into uh, the regular curriculum of every country uh, I, I do think is a, a, a way to, to tackle the problems. Uh, on the other hand is, is uh, um, I, I do think for training the trainers is another very important models that we can adopt. Um, right now I do see for example Lab Mission and also Youth Observatory uh, and also some others uh, partners in, 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 uh, for the youth group, they have engaged in uh, the internet government discussion. They have already been the leaders of uh, the internet government discussion nowadays. Um, so what they can do next, or what we can do next is uh, bring our knowledge back to our community, be the leaders and be the trainers uh, to influence to our peers. So I, I do think, um, although there is a lot of challenges to bringing uh, the community to uh, the global discussion, but how about on the other way around we can uh, just go back to our community and go back to the local level to do the work. Uh, training trainers is a, a way to, to our, I think, is probably uh, some probabilities on, on these kind of areas. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, reality is, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, open forums and, uh, uh, you know, discussion uh, groups where uh, youth, where it's like, uh, you know, it's open. But the thing is, uh, uh, youth are lacking, you know. It's basically when we talk about funding or opportunity, it's there. It is there, but it is not coming out. So what do you feel is the problem? You know, like as, as we listed down, there were some issues, uh, you know. Um, it is technical, yes, we, we do consider it technical, but what should be done uh, to, uh, to make it more focused in terms of how we can generate awareness and how we can reach at, uh, you know, grassroots level? So, you know, if any of you could uh, feel free to talk about this issue. Just waiting in for a second. I mean, um, I, was, I was thinking about uh, what David was saying and thinking also about the ICANN community especially. Um, I, the ICANN community is one of the communities in, in which volunteering is very necessary. And people are start, not starting, but people are again facing some problems of volunteering burnout. So you have like the more established community members who are no longer willing or are tired of working with this like special subject. And we have this gap in which you have the fellowship program, you have the next gen program, and you have like the more established community members. And there's like nothing in between because like they don't quite want to engage with the youth because they also see us, see us as like um, not like not as if we didn't know the subject well, as if we were um, some like professional travelers. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, I mean, I really have problem. I, I have, I have like this huge problem with the, this prejudice that we often encounter as like young people joining communities. So, I, I mean, at least I don't like being seen as a professional traveler or someone who is not <laughs> willing to work with the team. So. This, this would be like this first problem that I would like to highlight. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, Bruna, uh, you know, like maybe ICANN is like more wiki focused. So is it because of the user friendliness, you know, like the, the issues, people are not that, that you know, like friendly, so. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know. Um, it's, it's like internet governance for itself is already a hard subject, so. Um, us Brazilians, we find ourselves so proud of like multi-stakeholderism, but still it's hard to engage Brazilian youth on the subject. So it's not that the community is hard, it's, it's more of a problem of the subject on itself. So I'll take it. Uh, I think we have a question. Uh I'm Rita Chaudhary from India. Uh, just two point, two or three points, rather, I would say. One, when we're looking at internet governance, it's a big 
it's it's a vast issue and ICANN's mandates are quite limited to just names and numbers. So there are only certain things which ICANN would look at. Um, yes, there needs to be more young voices, it needs to be more inclusive and there are discussions which are going on in, in terms of increasing the ICANN's diversity in the accountability tracks. There's much which has been done, but there's more to be done. That's one point. Second, when we're talking about youth not being interested in the subject, we need to understand that if you go and tell them that, okay, let's talk about internet governance, it's not going to matter to anyone. You have to say how it impacts them. When they are using their mobiles or surfing internet, what they do, what they are not doing, how it is being captured, whether it's advantages for them, disadvantages, what are the issues which can come from cyberbullying or anything uh, is something which, uh, you know, the impact of the, that, if it is explained well, would actually help. Uh, thirdly, there are very few road models to, role models to explain it to the youth. Um, and obviously, there are not many adults who can explain it to them. For example, a father would not be able to explain to a child uh, how to use the mobile. They don't even know how to actually uh, restrict, or not restrict, but to train, build up a behavior. So those are things which even the senior, the generations ahead needs to, um, you know, learn. So it's a learning process for everyone, and I think I agree that People who do have some amount of information, they need to go back to their communities and communicate and also get issues and perhaps a forum, which you are kind of looking at, would definitely help in exchanging information, uh, thoughts, and come up with certain best practices which can help. Yeah, thank you, Amrita. Uh, I think we have an online question. Uh, Mahi, can you? Yeah. Uh, it's from Brazil. Uh, Rakino on he or she asking why youth oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, why youth on, uh, on the table wouldn't that reproduce all models of non interactive panels as uh, talking heads uh, how about youth as speakers yeah edmund edmund Chung here from dot asia not trying to answer that question <laughs> Um, but of course, we, we should all try to engage in an in in open conversation. Um, picking on what, what was just mentioned, I, it's, it's very interesting. My five-year-old daughter, uh, just a few, few weeks ago, just asked me one very big question. What is the internet? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like totally tongue-tied. I was like, what? Okay, how do I answer that? So uh, on the, on, back on the subject, there are, I think there are three, three areas. We, we have been, from that age, we've been engaged in youth engagement and youth development for, for 10 years now, and we did a bit of a review this year, and, and there are three areas um, very important, and a couple have been mentioned. One is the knowledge. It, you know, you, we have to equip uh, young people with the knowledge to in order to engage. The other is having a platform, uh, having a platform for people to actually speak out. Both of them we, we kind of have now. One of the things that um, we are missing, and it's a, it's a resounding uh, uh, note from, from young people, is young people seeing what they participate in and, and seeing the results from it. That's very hard. Uh, 20 years ago, actually, when I was still a young person, I guess a youth starting to participate in, in, in internet governance, that was 1999, I was much more able to see what I participated and see the results of it much sooner. So within three months, I will see something happen. Within six months, I will see something happen. Nowadays, because of, of all this growth, it's much more difficult, but without seeing the results, without seeing the impact that young people can actually put on, on certain issues, it's very hard to get them to come back. Um, so that's something we're trying to figure out, and I think others, uh, uh, please help, help us to, there, how do we get uh, uh, young people to participate and then see some of that impact in, in policies, in things that no matter it's ICANN or, or other forums, to see that the impact, and that's what's gonna get people to keep coming back, I think. Uh, Aris here for the record. Uh, it's it's like we, I'm I'm lucky to be to be in a position wherein uh, I have to do a curriculum, wherein in our institution uh, it's like we integrated some of the IG concepts already, uh, going towards each and every subject and enlightening some of the students of what IG is, and. 
uh, besides that, we I also try to to bring them to some of the policy sessions and even some you know some forum or some conferences that you know that can stimulate their interest. And not only that, but I also uh, tell them to volunteer, volunteer not only to to speak, but to do some of the groundwork wherein they would be part of the organizing committee and, and so on and so forth. So they would see and they would be able to speak to people who are involved in IG more often than not. So it's like because of that, it sparked their interest. And with that interest, maybe hopefully in the future, they would be able to participate more. Yeah, um, I think taking from the experience from the past year and I think uh, also with the discussion with Black Mission team in the past, uh, we do think there is some role models or, or some best practice right now for the youth engagement program, not only on IG but in general yeah. that is quite famous, for example, like the model UN model. Uh, it is a quite successful model that uh, in, in terms of like branding and also like marketing, uh, all students will know about Model UN, they will be actively engaged in there's some partnership with different unis and even some uh, chapters in, in the local areas to doing their own, own work and sending people to uh, UN somehow to, to like have a taste of how the discussion is. So I think there's a quite an interesting model to, to take reference on. Uh, right now, I, I saw in the past few years, we, we have organized the youth IGF uh, programs uh, all around the world, and it, it start growing. I, I saw there is some, some potential uh, to take reference to both, like or, or bring, bring some linkage between those uh, model UN and also YIGF to to make some integration in, in it, uh, because. Uh, in terms of brandings, we can cooperate with some schools in, in the local areas to, 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 to doing some local engagement projects. But unlike uh, the model UN, model UN seem, seems also just like model uh, model one and, and have a taste on, on, on the whole situation. But youth can actually participate in the internet government discussion. So I do think there is another uh, advantage for uh, those YIGF, I mean youth internet governance forum and initiative in the coming future on this kind of area in terms of like branding or real participation, not, not real, but actual participate in the process. So yeah, my two cents. Thank you. Um, so I just want to offer like a youth uh, opinion on the points that you guys said. Um, <laughs> um, because it's actually true about the continuity problem and like the volunteer exhaustion. Yeah. Because I personally started when I was still in secondary school and now I'm almost graduating from my uh, undergrad. So it's like you've been doing this uh, going to conferences, sharing your opinion and um, your experiences for four years, and you feel you start to ask like, ha, uh, where will you see? How will you see your work? Um, how will you see your work uh, uh, have an impact? Like what Edmund said that uh, we want to see what we do uh, as like creating an impact to the community. And like, of course, going to conferences starts conversations. People people get to hear our opinions. But how do you take it, you know, further? It's not just, and you know, we just we don't want to just keep talking and talking, and then there's no um, action later on. So uh, I think that's also something that um, young people and also different uh, groups need to think about and collaborate on. Uh, thank you, Jen. Uh, now, yeah. yeah, we have a few questions. Uh, yeah, please go on. Thank you so much. I'm Esther from ISOC, Youth at IGF. Uh, thank you for all your amazing stories and the work you're doing. Uh, I wanted to give uh, two contributions. Uh, first of all, I want to say that in this room, uh, the youth we are engaging are mostly those who are already connected and those who already have uh, some information. So those who are disconnected or having problems in their countries with low internet penetration need also to be put on this table. So what we're doing under the youth at IGF, we've created a project called Digital Grassroots. This is where we work with young people, 29 years and below, to reach local communities where they have internet problems. 
uh, how we would do this is by engaging people in communities that have difficult access by having uh, one focal point of contact. So if one person has knowledge on how to use the internet, on how to engage with it to create better policies, they can then educate others, others in the community who don't have that knowledge. That way, even though these communities are not connected, uh, the one person can educate them so that once the infrastructure starts to come, they'll be up to speed with it. And of course, we're open to engaging with other youth projects. We can meet afterwards. Uh, my other contribution was also, we made, made, Bruna made mention of funding. Um, there is a lack of trust for young people. Uh, like we will see in a multi-stakeholder meeting, when a young person speaks, they take us like, yeah, like professional travelers, like we don't know what <laughs> we're talking about. Uh, but really, young people should be taken more seriously because we do know why we're here. And uh, this also translates to the funding process. Uh, they expect a young person to have years of experience, but if someone has a good project, there has to be a level of trust to the young person. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, thank you for your comments about uh, how... Uh, please say your name for the... Oh, my name is Rohan Daswani, and I just want to thank you for the comments about how getting a result from your actual, like, what you put into is something that's important. And I think that's not only something that's good for youth, but also for adults, of course. But something that I wanted to add was that youth empowerment is something that's uh, very important. As when a youth comes to event like events like these, they may f seem overwhelmed by the atmosphere or like by the knowledge of other people. I mean, just yesterday I was sitting with the president of Switzerland and stuff like that. But the problem is that youth may feel like their contributions may not be as like as worth it as the contributions of others as they might not have the knowledge etc but I, I feel like it's important to, to make youth know that they are the users of they are one of the main users of this internet and give, giving them an idea that they actually matter and their contributions matter is something that's very important as otherwise it, they may come to these events but their voices will not be heard and so some giving something for them to speak up about is something that's very important to me and I just want to hear your thoughts on how we could do that. Yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just like to say a few things. I would I'd li love to share my experience. In 2013, uh, that was my first IGF, uh, though I started involving in the field from 2007, but that was the first IGF that I attended. And when I stood up and when I shared my story, you know, people said I was wrong. People said I was wrong. You are, you are not. This, these things don't, doesn't happen in, in, in our part of the country or you know, in, in our region. And I stood up there and I said my story that I was attacked for reporting online as a citizen journalism. And uh, you know, there were people, they, were, you know, like, they, they said as if the issue was not there. Right? But I spoke. And you know, the energy, the, 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 f the goodness that I felt, you know, because I stood for change. Literally, when I came out of the room, I felt you know, I shouldn't have been there. I felt that. It, it was a huge embarrassment because somebody from a reputed organization stood up and said that. And I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't shallow down. I just went forward and today I'm here. I'm, I'm here with Learn IG. So salute your efforts. Please do, please do. People are there, people will support you. It's not just, just that one discouragement. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Learn IG, with Learn IG we have reached we have tried to approach all the internet organizations. None of them said no, they, no funding, no nothing. I said, we will do, we will do, we will start. It took us two years, three years. Now we have documents, we have like list of documents. We're working on child on, on uh, online protection. We're working on other issues. So it is not just about, uh, you know, being vulnerable or being f feeling low. It's about seeing the people, matching the interest Networking, these events are for you, the youth. I can understand there are lapses that, you know, within the training programs, we need to improve. We need to understand you because that's the pro where the problem is, right? So, you know, and, 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 you know, the leadership is coming. They are realizing certain change is not possible, but things are changing. 
And when things change, you will be there, we will be there, you know, to make, to secure our rights. So I think I was quite excited. Yes. <laughs> Saeed. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Saeed Zazai. Uh, and I'm an APSIG Amazon fellow. <clears throat> um, I have a question and a suggestion. Uh, in terms of uh, the youth engagement program that we have in, across different countries, and, and we all discussed that what are the challenges and what are the approaches uh, and what are the different solutions that worked out in your countries and that didn't work out in your countries, and same perhaps in my country. So I, I think what I would suggest is that there should be some sort of a database uh, with the support of a major organization because we have tried doing that on our own but it kind of doesn't get that uh, um, support from, from the individual uh, communities. So a support from a major organization in that region for in an online database that where you know, some of the leaders could come and discuss some of the issues and challenges and the approaches to that. Uh, things that worked out in my country, perhaps it will not work out in your country, but it will give you an understanding of how to change your approach and how to uh, fix them. Um, also, in terms of uh, um, in influencing uh, youth and, and other general public for issues of intern governance, that is a major challenge. When we were doing an intern governance school, a lot of people thought that we are actually going to talk about e-governance or e-government. Um, <laughs> well, it, it didn't take a long time. It took, us, it took them like five, ten minutes to realize that it, this is internet governance, which is directly related to their daily life and, and, and things like that. And they were a lot more interested than e-governance. Um, so associating the current political issues, the digital issues, like the policies that the government uh, bring forth, uh, the public services uh, that affects every individual's lives, you know, associating those issues with internet governance or with the seminars or whatever that we are doing in each country, those help a, uh, a lot in terms of getting the attraction from the either youth or, or, or general public or let's say children or, or women, the two minority groups that uh, are highly influenced. Um, so aside from that, I, a couple questions that I have, uh, either one or two questions is that, what platforms or venues did you use in order to, you know, the school that you had, the webinars or seminars or, or whatever uh, uh, workshops or sessions that you did in your individual countries as uh, in the beginning? Uh, by platforms and venues, I mean, did you go out to schools or universities or private businesses or other civil society organizations and, and which were, were, were more appropriate and who were more um, um, you know, kind of eager to, to listen and, and want you to come back. And also, what formats did you use? Did you use webinars, remote sessions with other organizations, or did you call a speaker from, other, uh, from the other organization like ICANN, APNEC, and, 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 uh, or did you, did you have your own expertise available in your local country and, and use them? Thank you. Oh, sorry, I, I called in to answer first. <laughs> um, so. Um, so far, the youth observatory, in, we, we've been trying, we have like different um, fronts, like type, types of things we are doing. Um, in Brazil, we have some members who have like um, called some sort of like the, the Bar Association of Brazil in order to help them go to schools, law schools as well, and teach some stuff on tech and how to protect yourself online and another like interesting topics not only going to schools and so hi i'm going to I'm, I'm i'm here to talk about internet governance some of us are trying to focus on a subject in order to get to catch the attention and then like get more people involved um besides that we also been we, we have been like we just organized the second edition of the youth like igf uh, which is like the youth forum one day before the like igf this year we did it in panama one day before we have reached out to the venue we told them like hi we're a group of young people we don't have any money can you please give us the venue for free or at least for a lower price and this is pretty much what we have been doing we have been like portraying how 
much of a starters we are and how much help we need to in order to reach out to people so and also we, we don't like restrain from reaching to the private sector so for the youth like IGF we have um, spoken to I think it was Google and Facebook in order to look for funding and we got some so a good thing would be not to restrain yourself to funding possibilities so like if you don't like the private sector it's that this should be a problem you should be able to reach to pretty much everybody because this is a multi-stakeholder arena so you shouldn't restrain from talking to people yeah thank you Bruna we have a question there from the floor please make it short uh, we have limited yeah. time so we okay. have a presentation here too so thank you hi I'm Helena and I'm an ISOC IGF at Youth Fellow um, so there's been a lot of great discussion about how the intangible impacts youth can have but what I've noticed amongst my peers is that a lot of us just aren't interested in learning about internet governance and cybersecurity and the thing is we're well aware that there are mics in our phones well aware that internet of things is happening and information is being sold but we're choosing to overlook these little breaches of privacy for the sake of continuing to use the devices and platforms that we want um, so what I've noticed is I think there should be more personalized and humanized as approaches initiatives. So my question to the panel really quickly is what inspired you to become involved in internet governance and why? I will just answer this because I feel very close to the topic. Uh, you know, uh, when we started Learn IG, uh, Learn IG uh, works in three ways. Uh, the social media, the uh, forum, we have a Google forum, and we have the content. So with the content, you know, with all the courses, with all the history of internet, uh, Somehow, you know, when I started uh, internet governance, I did the Diplo course, and I was kind of, you know, uh, I thought like it would not be that interesting for the youth. So what we did was we developed this, uh, you know, uh, this content, which are very specific. So for people who are interested in internet core values, we have a page for that. So pe for people who are uh, interested in uh, the current, uh, you know, uh, uh, information or the cyber virus that, 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 that went around WannaCry or anything. So we have specific contents and we have, uh, you know, shortlisted uh, the internet governance terminology that will help you to more adapt. So, you know, it, it can be a variation of how you can uh, work it uh, your way according to your country. Uh, if there is any comment regarding that, yeah. Me to answer your question, uh, I I went to IG by accident. <laughs> Actually, it's really accident. But you know, I was enlightened with the fact that you can really create something. You can create an impact later on, which will really impact the future, and more more often than not, the youth. And we concentrated here towards the youth because we know that this, this youth will be the future leaders of our generation, of the coming generation. So as more often than not, as an inspiration, youth, youth became an inspiration of mine because I belong to the academia. So as much as possible, I need, we need to build up the youth in preparation for what is coming. coming. Oh. Yeah, for a short one. The, uh, not only for your question and also uh, I would like to respond for the question from Rohan mentioned about the impact for the youth and also the contribution from, from youth perspective. Um, indeed, I, I, I was engaged not in internet governance uh, in a very young age, but, but um, back to the young age, like the age of 14, I, I was selected as an ambassador for uh, the United Nations Convention on the Right of the Child, which is a child rights stuff. Um, I'm doing some trainings and, and, and also participate in uh, those kind of discussion. And I was a uh, major student. I, I was studying in sociology. It seems it's really unrelated to IG. Um, and luckily, I, in the past few years, I was work for Dot Asia and supporting the net mission uh, to doing the youth engagement work. Uh, that's why I engage in the IG discussion. Uh, in a sense, I would like to say this. Um, uh, and, and sorry, I, and on now I'm, I'm working on a new initiative on the child online protection and uh, those securities issue uh, to doing some promotion, which link back to my previous interest on the children's right issue. And of course, internet is about uh, about how how the children be engaged and and to participate in, in the process. So I, I would say from my experience. Is, uh, don't underestimate the uh, influences of youth. Uh, you can still make some changes. Uh, when you meet some people in the past few years or, or in this kind of conference, you can you can um, seek for a larger like network and and 
in a sense, you can ask for their opinions on how to move on on your, your things you really engage or really, uh, really enjoy. For my interest is on children's rights, but it seems not really interest, uh, linked to the internet, but, but I, I saw a way there's some linkage, so uh, I started the whole thing. So I, I would say in the way there is, in this kind of conference, is a super awesome experience and super awesome opportunity to meet with uh, other people from other world and also in a high position, you can ask for their opinions and even ask for their help. Uh, some days things will be connected somehow. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you David. Yeah. So I was also a youth at IGF fellow last year as well, and uh, I start. Oh, so and I started. <laughs> <laughs> And I also started uh, I, my IGF journey when I was in secondary school by joining a competition. And I didn't know anything about internet governance, actually. But uh, my two teammates were studying ICT. And for me, I was studying literature. And we had to do a research report. So what we did was just combine our interest. And because of that, we were able to go to uh, the IGF in Bali at that time. And that was also the start of how I got uh, involved in internet governance, and uh, later on, I also uh, organized the YIGF. So, um, like, I think uh, going to these kind of conferences <coughs> helps you to meet people who uh, are interested to help you, give you, or uh, provide you a platform that you can use later on in the future. And, um, like, what David said, maybe start your own initiative later on. Uh, thank you, Jian. Uh, uh, now, uh, now we have a small presentation from Mahi. Yeah, uh, this is regarding uh, uh, Sri Lankan perspective, why we need people, and this answers the question that raised online from Brazil. Uh, so, uh, this is the Sri Lankan perspective. I'm Mahi Shurakitnagoda, uh, ISOC secretary, ISOC Sri Lanka chapter secretary and uh, the one who coordinate the IGF Sri Lanka and Youth IGF and SIG Sri Lanka and Learn IG, uh, work with the Learn IG. Okay. So, uh, first of all, there is the definition from the United Nations. They call, uh, they define youth is the best understood as a period of transition from the dependence of childhood to adulthood independence. In Sri Lankan government definition, uh, Sri Lanka defines youth as between 15 to 29 years old uh, people. Okay. Is it true for all? All the countries? Is it all true? No, it's fluid. Yeah, it's fluid. Uh, the definition is fluid because uh, it depends on the culture and the social backgrounds of this uh, society and those communities even, not in the countries even. So who are youth? We have millennials, we have Generation Y, we have Generation Z. There are about 1.5 billion people who to be considered as youths. So it's <coughs> nice to read this uh, reading, why recent global uprising are led by youth. So, so this will answer why we need youth in, on the table in the policy decisions. So uh, youth type uprises. In the recent global uh, youth type crisis, uh, we can see that uh, youth are its movers, uh, mainly within the occup uh, Occupy Wall Street, uh, Spanish indigenous and uh, Egyptian walk us up. So, and uh, with not only these, these are uh, international ones. Sri Lanka has uh, major th two things that I'm going to discuss now. Uh, but before that, we need to hear something good something sweet. Uh, focal point on youth, which is a uh, United Nations program on youth, is fall under the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, which is no normally we call UNDESA, <coughs> where, which is the same department IGF falls under. So uh, it's better that we know that uh, there is a combination in between the departments so where we can reach these uh, department very easily as uh, IGF fellows. So these are the typical characteristics of a youth. You may know because you almost here are youths and who just passed the youth like us. Okay, uh, they have uh, love to test 
and uh, they have some certain limits. Uh, they have an attitude. Uh, they think they know all. And uh, they like to face challenges. Uh, they are vulnerable, emotionally insecure, fear of rejection, and their moods are swaying. <coughs> Often project competence while lacking full ability. Identify with admired adult or often uh, rejects adults in exchange for friends. So these are some characteristics. These are not the all, but uh, we have to identify these uh, characteristics of youth uh, by physical, social, uh, emotional, and mental characteristics before we are go going into them. So uh, in 1971 and 1988, we had uh, two uprisings of youth, even though this has been uh, uh, identify that political uprisings, these are led by youth. Uh, the unfortunate thing, we lost uh, more than 2,000, which is being noted, but there are a lot more uh, youth were uh, died in these uh, things. We do not want to uh, talk into these tolls, the, these numbers. Uh, this is a because as what we all know, know, we need is a harmonious society. We need to live in harmony. We had a situation of three decade war in our country. My whole youth was under that period. So it's hard. So we don't need such situations back again. So we need to identify what are the reasons and why, why the youth uprisings are coming on. So uh, first, they identify as youth unemployment, which causes depression, frustration, loss of hopes among youth. And post-independence uh, unequal <coughs> distribution of resources within our country. This is related to our country. I believe it's, uh, not, it's uh, similar to most of the colonial countries. Uh, differentiation of education, class disparity, emerging due to the political national policies. Issued, issues on uh, languages, because we, our country have uh, two major languages, rather than English, Sinhala and Tamil. So there is, was an issue on languages. Limited or unlimited zero inclusiveness of youth in the policy developments. In 1976, uh, while creating the uh, constitution, there was a panel and youth were included, uh, but uh, there are uh, inputs were not taken into the making of the policy or the constitution. So this made the uh, uprise of the youth in the 80s. So uh, while we are categorizing them, these uh, reasons under knowledge, education, economic, and social needs, we have to address these issues. We are in an uh, era of uh, <coughs> information. Today we call it a digital era. Uh, we have an internet governance forum where it creates a platform to uh, people to come here, come to share their opinions, share identity, uh, and analyze and action on the issues they identify. In the information era, most values is information or knowledge. People should have the opportunity to learn, to get educated so the f future is more vulnerable the most vulnerable community is youth again uh, amanda Lem lenhart who did the research uh, with within the developed country uh, 24 percent teens go online almost constantly that means they have smartphones in their hands so they are almost connected. So the, the Learn IG research and the Learnhart's research shows the trend, what the youth are going on. So they should come into the IG arena. So they should know this knowledgeable on internet governance. Otherwise, there will be a big problem because another uprisings can, can arise. So to, today's or the 12th uh, session of Internet Governance Forum, the Topic is shape your digital future. So I just like to uh, define 
this is not for the old people. We have to shape this internet for the future generations. Can we do it without uh, youth? The answer is no. So what we have to do, we have to educate, we have to support them come to this floor, to this table. So learn IG does this, this thing. And the specialty on, be, be, behind this, the people who behind this uh, initiative is learned from their heart, who uh, learned by their experiences, and they know what they felt in the future, uh, in the past. So they are making the future, and they invite you to go into the uh, Learn IG platform. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mai, for that uh, presentation. Uh, now I would like to highlight the issues that a uh, few of us have raised in terms of uh, you know how we should get the uh, new age people start talking to the uh, about uh, internet governance you know how are we going to do that uh, because that's a ma major case grassroots initiatives is all about people like you me fellows you know we come to all these events we go back and we do nothing so that is something the problem where the problem is if we if we could coordinate you know just the way it is possible. And we need to be, uh, you know, we need to talk around the, these topics. And as, as, as they said, you know, volunteering is an option. You start by volunteering. Uh, the work that you do is very passionate, you know. It, it, it's something like you are bringing change. You are, you are standing for something that is right. So I would like to <clears throat> further talk about, uh, you know, um, for starting uh, new initiatives. Uh, what are the challenges or, uh, you know, if, if there are any stories that you have uh, when you started it, you know, those are the things that are going to motivate you. So, you know, uh, I would love uh, to hear something from David or Eris about this, like, you know, is, is there any story or any experience or any challenges that specifically targets uh, grassroots level initiatives mm -hmm. and how you're going to reach out uh, to uh, the youth? Because a lot of people have said that, you know, there is a problem for youth to understand the whole thing. So why is there a problem? So, uh, with regards to, to our case, uh, after APRIGF, uh, after YIGF, uh, the students were, were very adamant in, in organizing an event and we have done it for two years in a row now, wherein uh, they were bringing in people, uh, more particularly uh, university students, to know more about IG. It's it's a very simple thing. It's a, a simple for it's a simple for, wherein uh, we invited speakers uh, with different different backgrounds with regards to uh, some of the IG topics that are out there. For example, security. Uh, digital literacy and so on and so forth. So uh, we're doing it two years in a row now. We're on going now on our third year and those students who, who attended the event are the ones who are organizing it. They're the ones who facilitating everything from getting funding from the private sector and uh, help coming from the government and some other nonprofit organizations. Another thing is that currently uh, they are now <coughs> starting to create a digital literacy project. And uh, it's more on, uh, you know, training, training the, 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 ones, the ones who are in the rural areas. And they started it with, with one of the schools which are quite near to us. And they do lack the, the equipments and some of the facilities that needed to be to be implemented in order for them to be able to have that training. But they provided as such, they, they asked for help for some uh, private people and private institutions to lend them a hand as a start. And uh, because we really lack funding, we don't have anything actually. So uh, with that, they were able to, to facilitate training. More often than not, it's more uh, based on open source because, uh, you know, <laughs> we really, really cannot afford such uh, proprietary software, but uh, open source, they, they installed it among themselves and they created 
all the materials and conducted the training among themselves. So, so. Um, and regarding my experience, I would like to share two uh, pieces of experience on, on a different area. Uh, for the initiative, initiative I'm working right on right now is about um, to build a child online safety internet uh, based in Hong Kong to like tackle those, those abusive content like child pornography and, and inappropriate content. Um, I guess one of the main resources uh, we lack of is, is always funding. So uh, on, the, on this sense, I, uh, the group is trying to reach out to those traditional uh, NGO, the INGO, like Save the Children, to get a support on the funding issue to, to run the whole initiative. So it's not just limited to the industry of uh, internet, but you can just back to those uh, traditional INGOs to, to get in for some support. So this is one sense. Uh, for the other hand is uh, because for the online issue is not just tackled tackle by one party. So we are trying to engage uh, different stakeholders to uh, tackle the problems online for the child porn issues. Uh, for example, we have support from uh, uh, Asia and also some local communities, uh, the ISPs, a uh, police force uh, to join hand to tackle the problems. So I do think there's some linkage to bringing different stakeholders to uh, to join on the table uh, to solve the problems uh, in in terms of like financial or even technical support and and uh, and also some knowledge sharings and and because like uh, there's in hope network in, in the sense of po po providing some trainings on how we can deal with the situation. So I do think this is one of the way uh, based on my experience, and uh, I would say on on the other experience we'd like to share uh, because Jens have already left. Um, this is the initiative uh, mainly by NetMission. Um, on that, NetMission have organized the youth IGF alongside with the APR IGF as a very uh, core part of the program. Uh, they engage in the whole program because, because youth at I, youth IGF and in the Asia Pacific region, uh, this is a like for uh, a three days camp uh, for capacity building. Uh, but not just for capacity building, uh, like doing some role play, uh, they will also uh, attend those APRIGF sessions. Uh, in, in this sense, is like real participation and also learning some uh, knowledge on, on how the IG is. So I, I would say uh, this is the start, but it's not just end there. Uh, in these few years, uh, we were engaging more, we are encouraging more um, youth of the region to doing their own local YIGF. For example, in Hong Kong, uh, because that mission is based in Hong Kong, is trying to doing uh, the Hong Kong wide IGF in a sense to like engaging the community. Uh, how to do so is um, is because funding is also a very uh, strong issue on 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 this sense. I would like to see some support from uh, the big company like. Uh, uh, Microsoft to, to support the, the first year of the establishment of the program. So I, I would say, I uh, think it's not just an, in, in, in one point, it's more important is uh, how to find some resources and some, find some partnership in the sense to make things go forward. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mahi, do you have any ideas or like, do you want to share anything? Yeah. Uh, uh, as the ISOC Sri Lanka chapter, we did uh, many projects uh, regarding youth. Especially last year, we have conducted the first youth IGF. It was not actually a discussion forum. It was a session for youth to discuss their matters in an open platform. They discussed rather than IG matters because we make we want to make their them share their stories. So this is the first step that we had taken for the youth as the youth IGF in Sri Lanka. So uh, before that, we had uh, many programs, uh, especially regarding the safe internet pro camps. These are more interactive sessions where you can see online, if you check the uh, Facebook, uh, typing uh, internet, safe internet camps, Sri Lanka. So uh, these camps were interactive uh, things where that we discussed regarding more uh, IG issues rather than just uh, talking about uh, safer problems that we are discussing in a much higher level. So the people who shared their thoughts are very <coughs> different than we th thought. In the youth IGF, one fellow just came in. He asked us, uh, why you invite us? Because we don't have internet even. So he's from actually from uh, 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 North Central Province of Sri Lanka, where they do not have internet, even 2G. So well, the prop that, that was a proper question to be asked in the IGF because the people who uh, were 
as the observers, they should answer these questions. So they may not know that there is a problem in that areas and these youth uh, things. So internet addiction is a major crisis in Sri Lanka at the moment because most of the youth are uh, not aware of that they are being addicted to internet. So at the moment we are having uh, big camps, big uh, medical camps and uh, training workshops uh, on internet addiction. I better that we have to be collaborate and we can create the content for these things even. The, where learners you can uh, help us in these things. Thank you. Uh, yeah, now I have a question for you all. That, you know, there are like so many fellowships that are going on. Uh, you know, I've, there are people from Africa, there are people from Asia, Europe. Why is it that the fellowships are not coming up? Uh, let me be very specific. In Asia, a lot of the times, uh, uh, the fellowships are not circulated, right? It remains within a certain group of people. They don't share it, and it's very limited within the reach. Yeah, sure. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Ufa. Um, I'm Internet Society Youth at IGF Fellow. Um, regarding what you just said, um, okay, mostly in developing countries, we find out that there's really little or no internet access. There are really so many issues relating to internet governance in developing countries. And most of these times, we find out that the solution to these problems is because there's little or no awareness to internet governance in developing countries. I'm from Nigeria, and I'm sad to say that internet governance in Nigeria is very, very low. Like most youth my age do not know what internet governance is at all, and it's a shame. Most people just get their phone, and they know, okay, I can browse. They have no idea of the bureaucracy involved in internet governance, and that's really, really sad. So I feel that these um, fellowships, they are aimed at getting more youth from developing countries to be more involved in internet governance processes. And at the same time, it's just, um, let me just say, it's, it's, it's almost as if that these youth are now most of the time from these regions because these are the developing countries that, let me say, need this kind of fellowship to form and to, in an effort to boost inclusion globally. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is Noha, and I'm from Egypt. I'm a youth at IGF fellow as well. Uh, well, I didn't know anything about IG or IGF before applying to the fellowship, although I'm working in the IT field. And I considered this as a huge opportunity for me. Um, we, were, um, we, we had two selection processes, uh, the one, the online application, and then we joined um, an online course. Uh, to be to get introduced to uh, what is IG and what's the multi-stakeholder approach, and we were engaged in conversations, debates, and I I really appreciate um, joining this experience. Um, uh, I really need your recommendations regarding um, encouraging all stakeholders to nominate youth. Um, like government should nominate um, its youth to join the IGF, uh, private sector as well, um, and also how to um, encourage more IG schools, local or regional IG schools, and to be more frequent, not only uh, once a year. And um, I need recommendations about how to uh, maximize our benefits from our first IGF. Yeah. Uh, answer that, you know, like you could really use the uh, capacity resource that you have. You can write a blog, you can start a forum, talk about the issues, you know, get it starting. Don't stop. Yes. So don't stop. Like, you know, whatever you could do, uh, just engage in proper communication. Yeah. Um, I just have a point here. It's not that all the fellowships, etc., is not known to us, even in Global South, we do get information, if it's the ISOC, if it's the ICANN, Next Gen. However, these are not the only ones. There could be more for the youth, because 
the amount of scope or um, you know if you're looking at the region wise the allocations might not be uh, very just looking at the kind of people you have for example APAC might have more people than Europe it might not be so much distributed however it's incorrect to say we do not get information we do get information uh, if there could be more fellowships and opportunities it would be better continuing on the on the on the same topic i think that there are certain situations where the representatives of these countries the information that about the fellowship that comes on to them it stays with them um, so that's one thing that we need to address and who is the best institution to address that is probably the the fellowship provider uh, i would i would certainly push on to them to to make sure that there's a level of transparency in terms of the fellowship announcement that goes on to them, that they make sure that goes, it goes further into the community. And also um, things that, uh, uh, that uh, Lady mentioned about the local efforts. We need to make sure that the representatives are, are doing some kind of activities at the local level. Otherwise, if we are defining other matrices for the performance evaluation, and then like tweets and, and pictures uh, that comes on to Facebook and social media, those are not really good matrices of evaluating indiv individuals' performance in the, in, in the country that there, there are. I think someone was there. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Irene. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm an IGF Academy fellow. Um, uh, here, uh, one concern I have noticed that uh, uh, that a uh, lot of us are saying that it is very difficult that to draw the attention of youths to IG or like that. But uh, how I feel actually that rather uh, we need to draw their at attention to IG instead of we need to understand their interest of area. Then we need to bridge them those interests to IG. Let's say I work with uh, I work on citizen journalism in my area uh, in my country and also I work uh, on the uh, save the river camping as well. So we involved a lot a lot of youths in our campaign in citizen journalism uh, and uh, save the river camping through the citizen science. So those are the interest area of uh, the youths in our country and uh, and uh, to uh, once we understand their interest and their body language and their mind setup then it will be easier for uh, us to you know relate them with IG with uh, technological discussion or the facilities and maybe fellowship and funding as well so this can be one uh, you know approach from us towards the youth this is one thing and also second thing I may like to take some advice and um, comments uh, from this forum that if I want to form youth IGF in my country what would be the process and other things I need to go through uh, if I am interested in that thank you very much yeah. Um, actually, for uh, for the yeah, David, just make it short. We are oh, out okay. of time. Yeah. Actually, from the lab mission team, they have like uh, drawing some training materials online. Uh, is mainly on how they can or you guys can organize the youth IGF. Uh, I can share with you later on on, on that area, and also uh, talk to Anya. Anya uh, is the IGF secretary. Uh, she is mainly uh, focused on those, those area of youth IGF. So there is another session on tomorrow morning at 30. So you, you better can join and also have a look on that. Uh, yeah, let me inform you. There is a toolkit. There is a toolkit about youth IGF. So you can uh, search it on web and you can find it and the, the, everything, the process is written. Uh, uh, the, the people were involved, the experts were involved and there is a toolkit. So that's, that's for facilitation. And Anya is the contact person. Yeah. Yes, and uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, you know, I think we uh, we have reached our time. It was really interesting talking to you all, hearing your voices, stories. Uh, you know, we can collaborate. The IG uh, forum itself is for us, for the developing nation and the developed nation. We we have to collaborate because internet itself is very dynamic, and uh, we need to you know bridge the gaps and we need to move forward uh, for development and. 
um, growth. So thank you all for being here. Please do, if you want to receive the uh, report of the survey, please do give me your email. Uh, paper was circulating around. So uh, you should have it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you all.
Uh, we plan to start in about um, one minute.